right, Brian Sugger here again, certified personal trainer and baby boomer fitness expert, where today I'm gonna to talk about calisthenics over 60. Is it safe? And if so, how do I get started? This is a question that came up the other day uh, with a bunch of clients that uh, were interested in starting at the gym, and uh, I went over all the benefits of it, and now they're in here doing our small group training, enjoying it. All right. So is calisthenics safe? I kind of got to that right there. But is it safe? It's probably one of the best ways to get started back into exercise is if you haven't or if you're traveling. The reason why I like calisthenics to start is it's extremely easy on the joints. And when beginning an exercise program after having a layoff for a long period of time, if you were to jump right back in with say resistance training, um, it's going to overload the body, overload the central nervous system, and it's going to affect your ability to recover from your workouts. Next thing, uh, what's great about calisthenics is it helps you become more functionally fit, which, is, which just means you're going to be able to, you know, do life better. Like you're going to be able to keep up with the grandchildren, you're going to be able to do the activities uh, that you want to do uh, better. Uh, not only uh, is calisthenics safe, but, and it's one of the best ways to get started, the health benefits of calisthenics are off the chart. Uh, number one benefit of it, you're gonna start to increase more lean body mass. That lean body mass is gonna help you with your metabolism. There's gonna be a great, great cardiovascular benefit to, to it. Uh, there's uh, attributed to, and may attribute to, bringing down your overall blood pressure. Doing calisthenic exercises helps with mobility, um, helps with flexibility. And so by doing that, what it's gonna do is give more ability around the joint and it's gonna protect your joints more long-term. Uh, for women, uh, the bone density uh, benefits are off the chart. It's gonna help you decrease the loss of bone, um, but also it's gonna help you be in a better mood. It's gonna decrease stress, less anxiety. Um, it's gonna help you deal with life better, and it's gonna prevent you from making a lot of bad food choices. Uh, before you get started with this, you gotta get your mind in the game. So some of the things that my best clients, what they do to get their mind into the game, They've done everything in life pretty much already and they want to make this a healthy lifestyle because they want to be around to enjoy everything they worked hard for. So the number one thing you got to say, like going forward, like this is your identity. Like I am a healthy person. I am a fit person. When you have that identity, you're going to just do things differently. You're not going to, you know, overindulge in food. You're not going to overindulge in alcohol because that's not what a fit person does. A fit person does their calisthenics. Also, they develop, this is a healthy lifestyle. Like this is a lifestyle that they're gonna do forever. So in order to take those concepts and start to ingrain them into your body, ingrain them in physiology, ingrain them into your psyche, you need to create a ritual. So the best way to create a ritual is to put this in your schedule. So you wanna block out times in your schedule that you know, nobody can interrupt. That's what my best clients do. They go, hey, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8 a.m., this is my time. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 1 p.m. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, this is my time. And nothing interrupts it. Now, some days they may show up five minutes late and then I make them do push-ups, but um, that's, that's our rule here. But um, hey, you may show up five minutes late. You may only be able to get 40 minutes of that workout because you gotta get to the next meeting. But what you're gonna find is the consistency of having that in your schedule is gonna build you the lasting results. Uh, next thing, have written goals. Um, there's tons of studies out there. When you have written goals, you're more likely to achieve those goals. So uh, put it on your bathroom mirror, have it on a notepad, look at it first thing in the morning, look at it first thing when you go to bed at night, uh, reflect on it weekly, what's gonna be happening over time, you say, am I getting closer? I'm getting further. I'm like, okay, I need to do this. In, in the beginning, it's gonna be slow, but after a while, you're just gonna, you're not gonna wanna miss. You're gonna push yourself to make sure you follow through with that, and you'll start to uh, form uh, that identity. The last part is, uh, there's always a, re a why behind the what. So like when people meet with me, they say, hey, I need to start an exercise program, but why? So maybe you went to the doctor, and you want to improve some, some health things that he told you need to, or she told you to improve upon. Um, also, you know, uh, maybe you want to be around longer for the people that you love. You got to figure out why it's important to you. Maybe you have a big trip coming up and there's going to be a lot of activity into that. So what is the best way to get started outside of that? 
is like I said, um, you know, pick a location in your house that you're going to do it or pick a location that you're going to go to and consistently go to. Uh, and then I would set aside in the beginning for the first four weeks, I would do it to two to three days. After that first month, your conditioning will start to build up to where you can do this multiple times per week. Now what, what I want to do is I want to go into a beginner's routine of where you can get started to start building your confidence in calisthenics and so that way you can feel all the benefits of calisthenics. All right, first exercise we're going to um, do before hopping in a calisthenic routine is you're going to do your warm up. So down in the description below, uh, there's a whole uh, warm up series that I want you to go through first because you want to prevent against a, a strain, a tear, or pull, and it's going to prep your body for this work. First exercise you're going to do is body weight squats. They're a great exercise for your core, your glutes, and your hamstrings. How you want to do this is just first of all work through your range of motion. So when doing this exercise, um, if you can't go all the way down, that's fine. I hear you in the comment section. Just go through your range of motion on this. Or if you can go all the way down, even better. Um, so start initiating the movement from your quads. You're going to press your hips back. Press through the middle of the feet as you're coming up through the floor. You're going to take a deep breath in at the top. Fill your stomach with air. Exhale going up. That's going to help you have a nice strong core. All right. Next exercise, single leg RDL. Great exercise um, for the hamstrings, all right? Wonderful exercise for balance. Uh, multiple ways to do this. You can use support on a wall or a bench or a chair, or you can work on your balance without that. Uh, what you're gonna do is keep your chest tall press your hip back and you want to keep a slight bend in your knee. Next one is the bird dog. Bird dog is a great exercise for your hip flexors and your shoulders. What you're going to want to do is have your knees underneath your hips, hands underneath your shoulders, and then you're going to reach out opposite leg, opposite arm. Next one is a Superman. It's a great exercise for your shoulders and your back. What you're going to do is extend your body out. You're going to reach your hands up to the sky while you're reaching your legs to the sky. And then you're going to lower them toward the ground. Raise your hands to the sky, legs to the sky, and back. One of the best exercises that you can do for your hip flexors is called a bracer. Bracer is real simple. You're going to lie flat on your back. When you're lying flat on your back, you're going to keep your core tight. You're going to press in your thighs and you're going to resist your thighs coming in as you're pushing in with your thighs. Next one, great exercise, calisthenic exercise for your core. Uh, for your oblique specifically. Um, what you're going to do is lie flat on your back and what you're going to do is bring your legs side to side. Our last exercise is the Cobra. Now, the Cobra is a wonderful exercise that works the rhomboids, your lumbar traps. You're gonna lie flat on your stomach. You're gonna put your hands behind you, raise your hands to the sky, chest to the sky like a Cobra. You can make the noise if you'd like uh, and bringing those uh, legs up to the sky. Now that you understand all the exercises and what they do, uh, if you'd like yourself a good 22 minute workout, start with your warm up. go through each one of these exercises um, do uh, 12 to 15 reps, or if you have a timer on your phone, you can do 30 seconds on, uh, 30 seconds off. Down in the comment section below, let me know which one of these exercises you work best, and I'm really excited for you to start calisthenics.
and do it safely.